And good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Pathway to Hope Bible series. I don't know about you, but um, I would travel a long ways to hear the music that we've heard tonight. Would you say amen? Our first soloist was Charlene Ranville. Uh, she is a guest soloist to the Pathway to Hope Bible series from Montreal, Canada. And of course, our regular night to night singing evangelist, Shelly Sylvester. I'll tell you that I appreciate the music that has been speaking to our hearts and especially about our standing with God. Uh, we wanted songs that address the soul of individuals that make you think. And I believe that God has given us this type of music. In fact, if you've been blessed, it's just going to keep on coming because in addition to our nightly singing evangelist, Shelly Sylvester, we will also have on tomorrow night, uh, Lovener uh, Walcott Reitman, who will be singing for the next two nights. If you, you've never heard it before, you're going to be blessed. And then on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, we will have a uh, singing evangelist, Morgan uh, Hunt, Morgan Hunt from Oklahoma, Oklahoma. And so we have singers coming from all over. Lavender Reitman is here in the New York area. And uh, as we said, Charlene Ranville is from Ma Montreal and, and our own uh, singing evangelist, lead singing evangelist, Shelly Sylvester right here in New York. And, and, and then we, we'd, and we'd have more coming. So you have to keep coming if you want to hear challenging, soul-steering music. We are finishing tonight our first full week. Now, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like it's been longer than that. But uh, the fact is, it's been, uh, we started last Saturday night uh, and then came all the way through until tonight. That ends the first week. On tomorrow night, we begin our second week. I have a lot of ground to cover tonight, but I'm going to ask you something tonight. If you would be so kind as to afford me 10 minutes additional tonight, 10 minutes. It is Saturday night after all, and, and I believe that, that that 10 minutes will be time well spent. Uh, I have challenged myself that I will get through as much as I can of tonight's message. But if there's anything lingering tomorrow night, I will finish this one and go into that one because the two are intertwined. They are completely intertwined. And so I want to make sure you don't miss any of it. Let's go right to work tonight. Uh, I want you to know that tonight's subject is important. And if I was to, if I was to tell you the, the thrust of the, the messages for the week, it would be this. Back to God's original design. It, that's the general theme of this week. But you have to come. These will be messages, I promise that you have not heard before. We will continue to come straight out of the word of God. And I hope you can appreciate, we give you Bible texts night after night. Some of you said, Pastor, we've given them, you're giving so many texts that sometimes you're going too fast. Well, I'm gonna try my best to, 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 to be expeditious with the time and at the same time, slow enough that you can get everything. And don't forget, don't forget, that uh, you can still, I, I can still make sure that you get everything. Uh, I'm going to tell you, by the way, how I can do that, how we can do that very soon to make sure you get all of what I'm presenting by the grace of God. So listen to this tonight. We want to find out tonight what is the part of the Bible 
that was nailed to the cross. The part of the Bible that was nailed to the cross. Now, tomorrow night's message is a day to remember we must never forget. You cannot miss tomorrow night. Whatever you do, don't miss tomorrow night. Because these messages, as I told you before, are all sequential. And though these two messages, tonight and tomorrow night, must not be missed in the Pathway to Hope Bible series. And so make it your business, by the grace of God, to be with us at 7 o'clock on tomorrow night. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is your time, and these are your people, and this is your message. But human frailty now stands in an important position to give this message. And so therefore, I dare not proceed, except that I know that you are leading. Speak to me and speak through me, that the words I speak will not be my own, but those given by the Holy Spirit and prepare every heart, including the heart of the speaker, to receive this message. And may we purpose within our hearts tonight, we will not be the same once we have heard the word. May we be poised to say yes to your will tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. The part of the Bible that was nailed to the cross. I'm going to go right to the screen so that you can see tonight's presentation. Let me make sure we get the right one here tonight. All right, good. All right, and I believe I've put it up on the screen. I've got to do one thing before I proceed to make sure that you have this just right. Okay, very good, very good. All right, let's go right to the screen. I believe you should, yes, I believe you should be able to see that. Uh, let us begin. The part of the Bible that was nailed to the cross. Today, my brothers and sisters, many Christians say that the Ten Commandment law of God was nailed to the cross. Now, I want to tell you, I will be speaking about God's Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to encourage you if you have your Bibles, and if you don't, uh, uh, just, just take a moment to get your Bible and put this in front of you. I want you to see this in your own Bible, please. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 20. I want you to look at that carefully. Today, many Christians say that the Ten Commandment law of God was nailed to the cross. Could that be true? And why would that be? Is there something that's wrong with God's Ten Commandments? Well, let's look at them. And now I encourage you to open up your Bible. You can look also at the screen. What do the Ten Commandments say of Exodus chapter 20? Now, let me first of all say this to you. Many people start the first commandment with, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's not precisely what it is the first, is the first commandment alone. The first commandment is also attached to the first part of, uh, of, the, of Exodus chapter 20. We don't hear that too often. We're just sitting in our class uh, before COVID-19 hit down in Florida, and, the, it, 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 and our professor was explaining and showing how you must not take out the first part. Some people think of it as the preamble to the Ten Commandments uh, and, and just jump to verse 3. It says, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That is important. Because my brothers and sisters, for those who keep God's commandments, they must first recognize God is the one who has brought them into the place where they are. They may not have been in bondage in Egypt, 
But my brothers and sisters, the Ten Commandments deals with bondage, not nonetheless, the bondage of sin. So look at this. Look at this, everyone. Here's the first commandment. Now, you will see synopsis come up on the screen of the Ten Commandments, not the fool. I'll be reciting the fool. Thou shalt, and I'm going to pause and explain them. All right? Uh, I was, I was, I was in debate about it, but you know, I felt, you know, you got to make sure you understand what they're all about because people say the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross. All right, thou shalt have no other gods before me. God must be first. I don't think anything is wrong with that. Uh, I believe all of us must believe that God wants to be first in our lives. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now that's commandment number two. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. We are not to worship idols of any kind. Now, I showed you, my brothers and sisters, as we talked last night about what a true conviction looks like, we talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And remember, Nebuchadnezzar set up an image out on the plain of Dura. And when the band began to play, Everybody bowed down except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let me show you that. Remember that? Remember that picture? <laughs> huh? Now you know. Listen, I told you last night. I'm going to tell you why they didn't bow down. Now you know. Because the commandment says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. So it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were abiding by the second commandment. And remember we just read, what is it, Acts chapter 5, I believe in verse 29? We ought to obey God rather than man. That's what animated Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego. And that's why while everybody bowed down, they stood up. That's also why they got special treatment by having a visit from Jesus in the burning fiery furnace because they kept God's commandments even at the peril of their own life. Oh, my brothers and sisters. How wonderful the Lord is. We're not supposed to bow down to any images according to Scripture. Look at this. The third commandment is this. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. I'm doing this quickly now. Listen carefully. When we call upon the name of the Lord, it must not be for empty purposes. We just call on God's name. Oh, God. Listen to this. Oh my God. That's one of the one of the favorite lingos in social media. OMG. <laughs> now think of you. Oh yes, I know you. I know you're agreeing right now. You see it all the time in social media. OMG. Let me tell you this. When you call on the name of the Lord, it should be followed up by something, some act of worship. Dear Heavenly Father, and then you pray. Oh, God in heaven, then you preach or what have you, or you sing. But we are not to use the Lord's name in vain. Now, let me tell you something. You can, you can do that other ways, too. We have certain words in our vernacular that we use regularly that we don't even think about. It's taking the Lord's name in, in vain. Some people say, oh, gosh. Oh, golly, gee whiz, jeepers. Somebody said, I don't use those words. All right, you probably, yes, but you know what? 
if you look in Webster's Dictionary, where it's like gosh and golly and gee and gee whiz, those are called derivatives of God in the case of gosh and golly and Jesus in the case of jeepers and gee whiz. They're all derivatives of the name of God or Jesus. Do you see what the devil has done? He has actually gotten into our day-to-day -day vernacular, the way we speak, and got, gotten us to use God's name regularly without calling upon his name, which goes against what God says when he said, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. I'm moving on. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. This is the fourth commandment. And do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's the fourth commandment, and we'll talk about that more. The fifth commandment is this, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This means we ought to honor our mother and father, and that happens a lot of ways. Some people say, I do that. When Mother's Day comes, I honor my mother. When Father Day, Day, Father's Day comes, I honor my father. Well, listen, that's, that's important. That's good, but that's not all. It means to honor your mother and father. Uh, honoring your mother and father has to deal with how you uh, listen to your mother and father. If you are of a certain age, you're not adulthood. And even after you become an adult, you still listen to your mother and father. You respect your mother and father. You speak to your mother and father in a manner that shows honor. In doing this, you are showing honor to God who gave this commandment. Thou shalt not kill is commandment number six. Nothing wrong with that commandment. I don't think any one of us would want to say, uh, we shall kill. We should kill. Oh, no, we know what destruction comes fr from killing. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, that's speaking about either entering into relations, uh, marital relations that uh, when you're not married, or entering into relations with others that you're not married to. Are you listening? The Bible says, Thou shall not commit adultery. Now, let me just say this. Just imagine uh, uh, how this would be if people just completely ignored it. But let me say this. People completely ignore it right now. It's only some that pay attention to it now. Imagine if God took the Ten Commandments out and you could just do whatever you wanted to. Now, some people do whatever they want to anyhow. But I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, this is why there's so much destruction here going on in the family unit. It is because everybody's looking somewhere else instead of where they're supposed to be looking. Everybody is running somewhere else instead of who, who they're supposed to be running to. And therefore, there's nothing but confusion. Let's keep going. Thou shalt not steal. Nothing wrong with that commandment. Commandment number eight. We know that we want to protect the things that we have. And it is, it is a life altering when people steal from other people. Let's keep going. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now there's another way to say this. It's not just bear false witness. Uh, 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 not just bear false witness against your neighbor but to bear false witness, period. Don't lie. Come on, say amen. We ought not, listen, so many people lie in order to get ahead, so to speak. 
They lie because they feel there's an advantage. The Bible says this, lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. Now, let me tell you this. In addition to these other commandments, liars have no part in the kingdom to come. In addition to violators of the rest of these commandments. And I want you to understand tonight that we have to get away from this idea that if, if we just tell a little lie, some people call it a little white lie, we will get ahead. You know what happens when you live your life that way? You'd have to tell, tell a little one here, a little one there, and sometimes you're on one story having to tell more lies because they didn't add up, and the next thing you know, you got a whole portfolio of lies. Brothers and sisters, we ought to tell the truth according to the word of God. And the 10th commandment, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. That's the 10 commandments. So we should not covet. Let me say this quickly. We should not covet what people have. We should not covet who people are with. We should not covet what people have, what they own. You know, there's an old saying of keeping up with the Joneses. You ever heard that before? Some people want to have what everybody else has. So they go out and they, hey, listen, have you ever seen that? You live on a block and you, you see somebody goes out and they do some certain landscaping for their home. Next thing you know, next door, the same landscaping pops up. And then the next thing you know, two doors down the same. Next thing you know, the whole neighborhood got it because we want to keep up with the Joneses. Listen. There's nothing wrong with wanting to see nice things. You want to change things. But listen, let it not be for envy why we are trying to keep up with people. Now, people can give us ideas that will help us do home improvement. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. But listen, we ought to be content with what we have. Some people will go out and buy cars that they don't have enough money to be able to pay for it. But why? It's because they're coveting what another person has, and they can't even sleep at night until they get what they saw someone driving down the street in. Come on, say amen. Am I telling the truth? But let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing wrong with God's Ten Commandments. I want you to look at this. Let's see if the, if the Word of God tells us anything about that. In James chapter 1, verses 22, and 23, uh, 22 to 25. Here it is. The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer of, uh, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Follow this, follow this, everyone. For behold, he, he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Now, we need to find out what that law is because it's being called perfect. The perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. Con that means continue looking into the perfect law of liberty. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Blessed how? By continuing to look into the perfect law of liberty, you will be blessed. In fact, let me show you something, brothers and sisters. Keep looking. Keep looking. If you look at Romans chapter 7, verse 22, Paul says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. David says in Psalm chapter 40 and verse 8, I delight to do thy will, O my God, Yea, thy law is within my heart. In fact, brothers and sisters, look at this. Psalms 19, verses 7 through 11, about the same law of God we just read in Exodus chapter 20, David wrote a psalm. Now, let me tell you this. There's a song we sing today using the lyrics of the scriptural text that you have in front of you. I'm not going to do it tonight because of time, but we will get a chance to do it tomorrow.
by the grace of God. You got to come. You're going to hear this. We're going to sing this song tomorrow night. Uh, the lyrics is beautiful song. But look what David says about the law of Exodus chapter 20. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Isn't that what we just read about the perfect law of liberty? The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Then it says this. This is probably one of the most telling verses. You're going to understand this as we continue night after night. You're going to understand what this is all about. Tonight you will understand even this verse. Look at this. Moreover by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them, there is great reward. There is great reward for those who keep God's law. My brothers and sisters, let's continue going. The Bible says this now in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14 and 15. Here's the reward that we were talking, we were talking about. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now, we talked about the tree of life. That was in the Garden of Eden. But the tree of life will be in heaven when we get there. Follow me, brothers and sisters. When it talks about entering in through the gates into the city, that city is the New Jerusalem. What is the passport in to the new Jerusalem, which we know to be heaven. Listen to this. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Brothers and sisters, commandment keepers are going to the kingdom. Commandment breakers will not be in the kingdom. You said, Pastor, are you sure about that? Look at this. The same Revelation 22, look at verse 15. For without, you see my cursor here? For without, that means outside of the gates. And that doesn't mean just feet outside the gate. That means just not inside. For without, outside the gates are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Does that sound familiar? Murderers. Thou shalt not kill. Idolaters, thou shalt not make it to any graven image. Commandment number two, remember that. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Commandment number nine. Brothers and sisters, listen to me tonight. The Bible clearly teaches commandment keepers will be in the kingdom. But commandment breakers will not be there. My prayer is tonight that you are making up your mind. My prayer is that you've made up your mind. That you want to be a commandment keeper. Listen, my brothers and sisters, everybody talks about heaven. And, and lots of people just simply talk about heaven as, as if a place where just everybody will be there. And I want you to know that everybody is invited to be there. And I want you to know that God wants everybody to be there. But the Bible tells us specifically who will end up there. It is not to be defined by the favorite preacher. It is not to be defined by a church of high profile. It is to be defined by the word of God. Search the scriptures, the Bible says, for in, in them you think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. You want to know what the Lord says about who's going to heaven? You saw it right there. It's right there. It's right there in front of you on the screen tonight. God's law, my brothers and sisters, is the basis for morality and the standard of judgment. Let me show you this very quickly. I'm going to do this really quick. Watch this, everybody, tonight. Look at what's happening here. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. 
That means respect God, not to be scared of him. And keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Now, hold on one second tonight. I want you to follow me. Some people say that the same commandments I read in Exodus chapter 20 was for the Jews. My brothers and sisters, the commandments were not for the Jews. The commandments were for all mankind. Can I prove that? Look at this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You saw that, didn't you? Not the Jews. For God, now it uses this word, shall bring into work, ev into, shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That tells me the commandments are going to be the criteria of God's judgment. Now, we haven't talked about that specifically yet, but I'm just giving you a little preview. God's judgment will have as his centerpiece the Ten Commandments of God. Everyone will be judged based upon the law of God, and that's their accepting of it or their rejecting of the law of God. Look at this. That word we saw, God shall bring, that means in the future. Well, we jump now into the New Testament. It's James chapter 2, verses 10 and 12, 10 to 12. The Bible says this, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend it in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Now hold on one second. And see what the Bible is saying here. Whoever keeps the whole law and yet offended in one point, what law is he talking about? Well, it says, do not commit adultery, do not kill. We know this is citing the Ten Commandments. But the Lord tells us something that's very important for us to get tonight. The Bible says the law is all one. It's a whole document. Ten laws that make up the law of God. Ten component parts. If you say, I keep the whole law, but yet offended in one point, it is you are guilty now of violating the whole law. So we must not take any part of the law out. It must be kept on a whole. Now look at the last part there. Look at these words. So speak ye. And so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now that goes along with uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment, right? Judgment, it's pointing to judgment. Verse 12, it's pointing to judgment. So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged. Well, I want you to now to go and follow God taking John the Revelator down the corridors of time to God's day of judgment. And look at this. You say, how will you know this? Well, well let's look at it. Now, this happened in 92, 93 AD when he got this vision. I'm talking about John the Revelator out on the Isle of Patmos. But the judgment hadn't started at that time. He, but he's looking into the future when it would begin. And look what it says. Revelation chapter 11, verses 18 and 19. And the nations were angry. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. Judgment time. It's here. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name small and great, and should it destroy them which destroy the earth. Clearly, this verse is announcing judgment time has come, not at the time of the vision. It would be in the future. But follow this, Revelation eleven nineteen, 19. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. 
and there were lightnings and voices and thunders and an earthquake and great hail. The temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. Where does judgment take place? It takes place in heaven. We call it the heavenly bar. Now listen to this. Judgment and its criteria is the Ten Commandments. But you say, but pastor, I'm looking for the Ten Commandments here and I don't see it. Well, what did we see? There was seen in his temple the Ark of his Testament. I'm going to explain to you how that Ark, the Ark of his Testament gets that name Ark of his testament. What is inside of that ark? Well, we don't don't worry, we're gonna come back to that. Where does all this confusion come out now about uh, 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 about and this whole idea? Listen to this about the law. Excuse me, where does the confusion about the law come and what was actually nailed to the cross? Let's keep looking now. Well, brothers and sisters, when you read the Bible, you have to do it this way. According to Isaiah 28, 9 and, 9 and 10, and 13, it says this, whom shall, he, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So you see, when I asked that question in Revelation 11, verse 19, about the temple of God that was open in heaven, what was seen in this temple, the ark of his testament, we've got to go to another verse to find out where you understand the name testament or the ark gets the name, the ark of the testament from. And what does it mean by testament? We'll see that. Look at that. Verse 13. The word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So we, when we study the word of God, we've got, we don't stay with one text. We have to go uh, through a, a multiplicity of texts. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you why that ark was called the ark of his testament uh, in just a little bit. Here are the main texts where the confusion comes in when people say that the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross. Here's where the confusion comes in. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, here it is, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. And then it says this, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in a respect of a holy day or the new moons or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let me go back in just a second. Let me show you something very quickly. People believe this is talking about the Ten Commandments. Tomorrow night, I'm going to show you what part of these verses that I just read is why they think the Ten Commandments were nailed to the cross. I'm going to show you what part of this reading that I just gave you, uh, 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 why they think it means the Ten Commandments are nailed to the cross. But let me tell you, here's a problem. When you read the Word of God, you don't pass through stop signs. Oftentimes, we just run right through and we miss certain stop signs. The Bible says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. The word ordinances means services or ceremonies. And then it says that was against us. I told you what Paul says. He, I delight to do his wall. I delight to do his law. David said, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. James chapter 2 calls it the perfect law of liberty. Brothers and sisters, it can't be talking about the Ten Commandments. 
Because first of all, the Ten Commandments are not ordinances. The Ten Commandments are not ordinances. They are not ceremonies. They are not services. Follow what I'm saying here tonight. They, they said it was contrary, the Bible says, which was contrary to us. The law of God is not contrary. We've already read Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So the law is not against us. There's a blessing attached, a scriptural blessing that's attached for keeping God's law. So it can't be the Ten Commandments nailed to the cross. And you got all kinds of hints as to what was actually nailed to the cross in this reading, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. It was nailed to Jesus' cross. That's another a sign. Even here, let no man judge you in meat or drink. Some people believe it just means on what you eat. We're going to show you that's not what it's saying. It says, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Now listen to this, brothers and sisters. The other verse, the other verse that people usually get confused on, it says in Ephesians 2.15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. All right, you I hope you got that down. So these are the verses that people will use to say, this is talking about the Ten Commandments, okay? Because they see here the word commandments, but you also see that word ordinances pop, popping up here. And brothers and sisters, we need to know what this is all about. There were actually four laws that guided and governed ancient Israel. There was the moral law, which is the Ten Commandments. There's the ceremonial laws, which are a, a what's called a commandments contained in ordinances. I'll explain a little bit more in just a minute. There are the civil laws, which are the laws that would guide the, the populace, the, 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 the citizenry of ancient Israel in terms of how they should relate to one another and what happens if they violate any of their civil laws. The dietary laws, which uh, govern how they eat, uh, what they eat and what they do not eat uh, in Israel. All right, four laws. But there are two of these laws that people confuse as being one in the same. And that is the ceremonial law and the Ten Commandments. So follow this tonight. My brothers and sisters, I want to show you now the difference between the ceremonial law and the Ten Commandments. The ceremonial law was written by Moses. We're going to see this in a minute. The moral law was written by Almighty God himself with his own finger. I said, Pastor, can you, can you prove that? Deuteronomy chapter 31 Verses 24 to 26 says this, And it came to pass when Moses had made an end of the writing of the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. Now you've got, we're getting closer to home now. You see here what's called the Ark of the Covenant. The laws that God told Moses to write, when Moses wrote it, in a book, it's called the Law of Moses with the ceremonial laws contained in there. And when he finished writing it, the Lord told him to take that book, listen to this, 
and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant. Not on the inside, on the side of it. You say, why does that make a difference, Pastor? Let's keep going. Exodus chapter 25, verse 16 and 21. The Bible says, and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which I shall give thee. Now, you saw in this verse, when Moses had made an end of, end of writing, Moses wrote the words of this law of, in a book, the law of Moses, then he commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant, to put the book of the law he wrote in the side or on the side of the Ark of the Covenant. Clearly, it was a book that he wrote, and clearly it was located on the side of the ark. But when it comes down to the law of God, and notice what we see here, the language that's coming up, and thou shalt put into the ark, not on the side of the ark, the testimony which I shall give thee. Where does he want the testimony that he gives Moses to reside inside the ark, not on the side, and whatever he gives Moses is called the testimony. All right, here it is. Do you remember? Revelation 11, verse 19, and the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. When you see that word of, it means that's the thing that it possesses. All right, you live in your house. I'm just calling a generic name out, Jones. This is the house uh, 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 of the Jones, right, of the Browns. That means I should expect if this is the house of the Jones, that's who lives inside. Isn't that true? I'll be looking on the outside of the house, but you say, well, this is the house of the Jones. Well, you expect the Jones to live inside. So when the Bible says the ark of the testimony, that means inside of it is the testimony. So therefore, it gets the name the ark of the testimony because of the presence of the testimony inside the ark. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that that word testimony is another, is another way of calling out the Ten Commandments. Let me prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Remember that the Lord said, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to personally give it to you. When you get it, go put it inside the ark. Read verse 21. Thou shalt put the mercy seat above and upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. Well, if we go right on now to Exodus 31 and verse 18, here it is. Here it is, unmistakable, brother. And he gave unto Moses... When he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. The law of Moses was written with the finger of Moses and put on the side of the ark. But the law of God was written by the finger of God himself. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. It's the only thing that God did not let the Bible writers write. God wrote the law himself, and he etched it in stone. Now listen to me for a moment. Anytime you write something in stone, it is because you want it to be permanent. If you will allow me to date myself for just a minute. You know, we used to do some silly things, that right? And you, yeah, you, some of you are younger now. You wouldn't know what we're talking about. But back in the days, when you were dating somebody, oh, and you thought you, you know, you would just love that person, and you just said this relationship will last forever. Then you go to get a 
some stone or, or, or perhaps you were inside of a cave and you would get a very strong stick. Some of you are laughing already. You're probably glad that nobody can, can, can see you on the camera right now, but listen to this. And you, you go there and take that really strong coarse stick and you would begin to write and very hard and fine and dig into the rock and you'd write your name and your girlfriend's name or your boyfriend's name, you know, Bruce and Sally forever, you know, John and Linda forever. And why did you write that in stone? Because you wanted this relationship to be permanent. And you wanted to come back one day and look and see that still carved in there and, and say, you know, and I'm still with so-and-so. Isn't that right? Well, let me tell you something. There's a reason why the Lord wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger etched in stone. It's because he intended it to be permanent. My brothers and sisters tonight, however, there are churches, Christian churches, that are teaching that the law has been done away with and nailed to the cross. Now, let me tell you this tonight, my brothers and sisters, I've done a whole lot. I'm not going to go any more than five more minutes. In fact, even less than that because of time, because I want to make sure you get all of this, all of this, whatever it takes to make sure it's covered. But brothers and sisters, I want you to know tonight, it is not for us to follow what people say. It's not what man says. The Bible, it is what the Bible says that we have to most be concerned about. People said that the law is done away with and it's nailed to the cross. I say to you, that cannot be backed up by scripture. In fact, I'm gonna show you one thing before I close. I just want you to see this. I don't, don't worry about what you don't see tonight. I'll make sure that you get it. I just want you to see a particular verse of Jesus himself. I just want you to see what Jesus said. Here it is. Here it is, brethren. Here it is. Here it is. Jesus himself said this. He said it before he died. He said it before he died. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 19, as we close tonight, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. And then look at these words. For verily, that means assuredly, most definitely, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus says, verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus said that. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, tonight. Jesus is saying, as long as heaven and earth is in existence, the law of God is in existence. And tonight, if you're listening to me and I'm preaching to you and we're here on Zoom, then planet earth has not passed away. Isn't that right? We are not in heaven. Come on, say amen. Jesus has not come. Therefore, the law of God is still in existence today. And everyone who wants to be a follower of God must keep his law. Look at the last thing of what he said here. Whosoever shall, shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So my brothers and sisters, I don't want to be standing before you as a minister of the gospel and telling you, you can, you don't have to worry about those commandments. I can't do that. If I tell you that, not only will you lose your soul, I'll lose my soul too. You'll lo I'll lose my soul for telling you that, and you'll lose your soul for listening to that. In fact, I, I listen, I've challenged you every night. Check out the word of God for yourself. Go home and read and check it out. Your soul salvation is too important. As our singing evangelist comes now, 
She's going to sing to us a verse of what the Lord has given her. And while she's doing that, I would like you just to go over to that link that's in the chat. You'll see it there and register your decision. I want you to listen to me. I want you to put over there. I want you to write it in. I will follow God. I will keep his commandments by the grace of God. It will be the best decision you have ever made. I will follow God. I will keep his commandments. Some people say, I'm not sure about some of these things that I'm hearing in the meetings. I want to learn more. There's also a slot over there that allow you to take Bible studies. And if you need studies on these and other things, you can get that. Also check that off or whatever it is. You can also give prayer requests on that card, whatever it is. Just check it off to indicate what is on your heart as we now hear uh, singing evangelist Sylvester. All right, and it is on mute. And God's faithful, these words say, I am the Lord, the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy non servant nor thy maid servant nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord bless the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false 
false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Amen. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Wasn't that something? She's saying the Ten Commandments in their entirety. Praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Some of you have made a decision tonight that you want to follow God's law. And if you've done that, make sure you indicate, I will follow God's law tonight. I will follow God's law God, help me to keep the law of God. Let's pray that the Lord will seal your decision. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for giving us just a glimpse into this subject as we have begun to crack the surface of this most important issue, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us to understand how important this is to you. Lord, we already understand what it means to be a law-abiding citizen on earth, in a city, in a county, in a state. And, and, and we're, 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 we honor people for that. But Lord, what does it mean to be a law-abiding Christian? Somebody who will do what God says. And what does it mean to be a Christian who says the law is done away with and nailed to the cross? Oh, Heavenly Father, what does that engender in man? Oh, Heavenly Father, help us to yield ourselves to you, thank you for the decisions that were made tonight, and may they be sealed in the courts of heaven and bring each one of us back tomorrow night and even more, Lord, so that we can hear that message a day that we, a, a day to remember that we must never forget. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amen. I want was lost but now am found was blind but now I see Amen T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve oh, yes. how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe. Amen. I want to say, mm -hmm. as Sister Sylvester sings softly, mm -hmm. if you have not given your heart to Jesus tonight, this is your night to do it. This mm -hmm. is your opportunity. We haven't come here to preach mm -hmm. and just to give me a little pick me up. We're talking salvation here. We're getting ready for the Lord's coming. My prayer, my prayer is you will fill out, you go to that link, you'll fill out that card, you'll see it. It says prayer, re requests, and also responses. I believe you will see some questions there and put it there by the grace of God. Put your answer, put your answer. Even write one in if that's not you. 
Write in what's unique to you by the grace of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the word of God. We thank you, Lord, for the plan of salvation. Oh, Lord, I couldn't preach tonight. I wouldn't have any hope. We couldn't have the pathway to hope meetings, Lord, if Jesus hadn't did, hadn't done what he did. But Lord, tonight we are buoyed up. We're animated because we see the end in sight. We see the culmination of the plan of salvation coming to fruition too. And let no one under the sound of my voice uh, be lost when you come. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.